Hey, good morning. Welcome. Come on in. Come sit around the table with me. I'm Andy Lee, and this is the Bite of Bread. It's daily nourishment for your soul. Happy Tuesday. We made it through Monday. We're making it through the week. We're all the way to Tuesday. Tuesday. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. And hey, Lucy Ann. Good morning, Sally. Good to see you. Come on in, Linda. Hey, Linda. Good morning. I'm glad you could join me today. I've got my coffee. You girls got your coffee, your hot tea, your hot chocolate, your water, whatever. We must drink water. I don't have mine with me today, but yes, I'm working on that. That's one of my things i'm working on hey pam good morning good to see you robin good morning good to see you this morning okay are you all ready for this teaching on boundaries this this great verse that we have in galatians 6 2 i am excited because my friends there's a lot to be found in the word today so hold my hands hey elaine good morning and selena and the smith family Good morning. Good to see you, Julie. I'm glad you could join me today. Hey, Stephanie. Good morning. Marianne, good to see you. Come on in. All right. Y'all hold my hands. I'm going to pray us up so we can be ready to receive. Are you expecting that God is going to reveal something to you today, to bring you to a place of freedom today, to bring you to a place to... To be able to be a stronger and healthier uh, minister to others today. Are you there? Are you expecting? I hope you are. We're going to pray for that. Hi, Dana. Good morning. Hi, Venus. Good morning, my sister. Okay, hold my hands. I'm going to pray us up. Lord, we love you. Everybody just say that out loud. Let them know we love you. We love you, Jesus. We praise you with our lips, with our hearts, with our minds, with our spirits. We praise you. Where would we be without you? We don't know. We, we've lived so long on the other side of the cross. Many of us, we've lived so long as Christians. We forget Thank you so much for what you've done. God, I pray today that we would receive, each of us would receive a word from you today, specifically to our purpose, specifically to our relationships, specifically to our ministry, specifically to wherever we are today, wherever the healing needs to come, the breakthrough needs to come, um, the strength the wisdom I just pray you impart that on everyone watching this video whether live or later on today tomorrow the next day or whenever they may watch it God that your spirit would be forever working in these words in this scripture it's in Jesus name I pray and God's people said amen amen Jane Brady good morning good to see y'all I just kicked off my slippers Got to have my feet on the ground, holy ground. Take off your shoes. God's got something good for us today, unless your feet are cold, because and it's cold some places. You may need to keep those slippers on. So we're in Galatians 6, verse 2. Linda Spinks and Elizabeth, good morning. Good to see y'all. So get your Bibles, open them up to Galatians 6, verse 2. I got my keyword study Bible. If you're wondering what I love to use, what I um, helps me dig into that ancient language, which we're going to do today, it's this. I know it's backwards, but it says the keyword study Bible. It's on Amazon. It's by AMG Publishers, and I recommend it. It's one of my favorite resources. Galatians 6 verse 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. That's it. Verse 2. I'm going to read it again. Good morning, Heather. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. You know, Paul writes a lot 
about relationships. Many of his letters, I guess really all of his letters to the churches were helping them deal with being these new Christians, being in the first century church, the beginning of the church, teaching them how to do that, how to live together. And you, you know, y'all know, the church is not brick and mortar. It's not walls made by man. The church is, it's us. It's a whole bunch of humans with a whole bunch of issues, all saved by Jesus. Thank you, redeemed, but still working it out. We're working it out. We're all still working it out. We are saved by grace, but we are still working out that transformation, that mind of Christ, that spirit of Christ. So Galatians 5, 1, he says to them, I want us to look at context because context is key. Hi, Bill. So good to see you, Sarah. I'm glad you could join me. And Linda, good morning. So we're in Galatians 6, 2, but I want us to look at the context of the scripture. In Galatians 5, 1, Paul writes, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So I'm going to say, amen. Oh, amen. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. Stand firm. And do not let yourselves be burdened. Burdened. There's that word, burden. Do not be burdened again. That's a different word from the burden in 6.2 that we're going to talk about. Do not be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. And he's talking there about the religious do's and don'ts that we put on ourselves and we put on other people to tell them that's what they need to do to be saved, to be right with God. And you know, there's just something about checking off the box. Hey, Erica, good to see you this morning. It's There's something tangible. Well, not something. It is tangible, right? So so when we can say, well, I'm not drinking and I'm not swearing, you know, we can put our list of sins and we can say, you, you can't do that. And so you got to check off that box. We like the tangibleness of it, but that y'all you know the freedom doesn't come from the outside in the freedom comes from the inside out and it comes only by the holy spirit as he transforms us and changes us and we surrender to uh, our lives surrender our life to his good morning Kristen. that's when the freedom comes that's when the transformation and the change comes and we're no longer burdened. Let's look at this burden. Now he's talking about here being burdened by laws. People telling you the things that you can and cannot, you should do. So many of us try to earn our righteousness and we try to make others earn their righteousness, their security in checking out those boxes. Um, my friends, but our salvation, it cost us nothing, and yet it cost us everything. Let me say that again. It cost us nothing, and yet it cost us everything. Um, what we don't get, what we don't get is the freedom. When we give our all, when we surrender our stuff and what we want and, and our sinfulness, when we surrender that, to Jesus, we, there's a freedom that comes with it. We don't understand the freedom, the depth, and the fulfilling purpose um, when we exchange our life and our wants and our thoughts and our actions and our wisdom for His. There is such freedom. Have you experienced that, anybody? Have you experienced when you finally said, you know, God, what? Ever. I can't do this. I'm making the wrong decisions. I want your will. When you say that, have you experienced the freedom that it gives? We need the mind of Christ. We need his thoughts. We need him to continually renew our thoughts. It's all about our brain. It's all about how we think. We know the battle is in the mind, right? But also, uh, the freedom doesn't come until we have renewed those thoughts. And being in the Word and, and knowing the Word is key 
to washing away our own thoughts and replacing them with the mind of Christ. But we cannot completely do that without the Spirit. And that's what we're going to see in the rest of this chapter. Now, this week we're talking about boundaries and how we set those boundaries and permission to set those boundaries and the wisdom in boundaries and what ministering to people whether you're you know we all should be we're all in ministry it just does it looks different not all of us are pastors not all of us are on staff at church not, not you know but we should be as christians as believers we have a ministry every single day hey michelle good morning as a stay-at-home mom you are ministering to those babies every single minute of every single day as a wife you're ministering to your husband as a neighbor we're ministering to our neighbors as a worker if you're working in the workplace um, you are a minister to those people around you it's gonna look different for all of us but we do need to be wise and have this wisdom and this mind of Christ and how we minister and the world will take our words that will take the words of Jesus the world takes the Bible and manipulates it and twists it and turns it around and I believe Galatians 6 2 has probably been one of those verses who that's been turned around manipulated and used against us I know it has me it has for me um, to make me feel bad and guilty so I'll keep on doing whatever I need to do or I'll do whatever that person wants me to do because that and they may not have even said that specific scripture but so it's in my head that I've got to carry other people's burdens and so what does that look like what does that mean you know Satan used scripture against Jesus when he was tempting him in the desert Satan took scripture twisted it around to to try to tempt Jesus it happens to us too people um, will manipulate the truth manipulate the scripture twist it around or turn it around I'm not so, in order to manipulate us and can I just say anytime you feel guilted into doing something you probably need to stop and you probably need to go to God and like a, okay there's a boundary being crossed here because when we feel guilty or guilted into something resentment is going to start building and that's the one of the number one signs that you need to draw a boundary line is when you start res from when resentment starts building up then there's there's something that needs to happen um, and you need to go to God first and ask for his wisdom for him to show you the best way to do this and and I've learned in the past I, it doesn't always work to say okay to that person that you know you're you're stepping back from sometimes you can't, you can't tell them sometimes you just have to know within your heart the boundary that you have to set and you just have to say no I can't not today and we think oh no but yesterday we learned that many times we enable people by continuing the 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 pattern of helping them when when we're guilted into it um, we are enabling bad behavior we're not helping them we're not strengthening them when we do that so I just wanted to see in Matthew 4 how Satan himself took the word hey Lori good morning he took the word and he twisted it and um, Matthew 4 verse 5 the devil took Jesus to the holy city and had him stand at the highest point of the temple now this is um, the, let me go back in the first verse um, it's Jesus is hungry he's been fasting the Bible says for 40 days and 40 nights and let me tell you what that means it doesn't really mean 40 days and 40 nights so the number 40 meant a period of probation or trial okay so and it also meant as long as needed so he's been fasting because for 40 days and 40 nights this period of probation or trial as long as needed 
also, because we think, how could he not eat for 40 days except for the fact that he was God? He probably did, it probably literally was not 40 days, but anyway, he's really hungry. It's been a long time, a long time. And so um, the tempter came to him and said, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And, and Jesus said, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so then Satan goes, well, if Jesus used scripture, I'm going to use it too. And so then he says, the devil took him in the holy city and he had him stand on the highest point of the temple. And he said, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot on a stone and listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So even you see how Satan took that scripture, he took that truth and he twisted it and tried to throw it back on Jesus. And that's good. That happens to us. That happens to us when we're helping people in need, when we're helping, trying to help people um, many times, you know, yesterday we, we looked at the scripture that said, do not be friends with a man that's easily angered. And that word meant someone who is indignant, someone who is just a victim and saying it's unfair, you know, it's all about them. So be, be on the lookout for that. And, and that can become, that can just become a way of life. So anyway, be be on the lookout. So if you're feeling guilted into something, if somebody is saying, well, good Christians help people, you need to really step back, whoa, 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 whoa. pray about it, think about it. Now let's look at the word burdened. Um, actually, I want to look a little bit more at the context here before we go there. Look at five. Look, Go back to chapter five with me. He says, um, you know, you were running a good race. This is always saying, don't try to start checking off the boxes again. Um, and then he goes, he goes to verse 13. Go to 13 with me. You, my brothers, are called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge what? To indulge the sinful nature. Now we're getting to the, the context of this of this verse of this whole chapter and even chapter six can i tell you that when paul wrote this letter he did not write it in chapters it was like all one big letter but now that it's been translated our our um translators have made the chapter breaks maybe it was a new paragraph in chapter six but it's still one big letter so Listen to this. So he says, Do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature, rather serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, or you two will be destroyed by each other. Then he says, So I say, live by the Spirit. Shelley, good morning. Live by the Spirit. Everybody say that live by the spirit so he's saying you don't have to check off all the blocks you don't have to do the law to be right with god you need to love one another but don't keep on going in the sinful nature and love one another so he says i say live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want to. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage. Cause some of us look at this list and we're like, I'm good. I don't do witchcraft. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm not doing the sexual immorality thing. And then he gets to stuff like jealousy and selfish ambition and dissensions and factions and envy and drunkenness. And, uh, you know, so some of that can hit home. Um, 
I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, they won't, you know, the kingdom of God is here, my friends. It's here. We're not waiting for it. We are going to get to get the full measure of it when we get home with him. But the kingdom of God is here. And if you're living that way, then you're not going to receive that kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, that brings us all the way to a verse that we all know well. Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Oh, wow. I'd so much rather be around that person, wouldn't you? I'd rather be that person. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So I think there was just a lot of stuff going on in the church of, well, I'm better than you are, and, you know, I checked off all the blocks, and I'm holy and righteous, and so don't become conceited and envying each other, because you know that we, that all, any of us could fall at any moment. We could be tempted by our sinful nature again. So just pretend like this keeps on going. Now, remember, he's talking about, he's talking about sinful nature, right? The sinful nature, the sinful nature, and living by the Spirit. So pretend like number six, chapter six is even there and he's still keeping on going and writing. He says, brother, if someone is caught in a sin, right? So he's still talking about sin. He's still talking about sin. If someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual, and that doesn't mean like, I'm so spiritual and I'm so godly. That's not what it means at all. It means that those of you who live by the Spirit, those of you who are living by the Spirit, should restore. Everybody say restore. I love that word. Don't you love that word? Um, You should restore him. How? You should restore him gently. Hi, Amanda. Good morning. He says, those of you who live by the Spirit should restore him, restore her gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Then it goes into verse 2. So context, context, context. We're talking about sin. We're talking about sin. We're talking about restoring our brothers and sisters who have fallen off the wagon and need to come back to Jesus and be restored with gentleness. Yes. Hey, Leah, good morning. Um, Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Let me stop there. So context. So before, I think, when we read this all by itself, when we read verse 2 all by itself, we think of burdens as being financial. We think of burdens as being, you know, tangible. We think of those being the burdens. But the burdens here, as I read it, are the burdens of, of this heaviness, of weight of this um, the sin, caught in sin. Those who have caught in sin, he says, to restore them gently. So carry each other's burdens. Let me tell you about this word burden. So the word burden in in the Greek, it's a weight, and it says it means to go down. So it's like it's this heavy, heavy weight that just pulls you down as you try to carry it. It's so heavy, it makes you bend, right? So remember in context, what kind of burdens are these? These are burdens that, have, you know, just trying to get rid of their sin, these burdens. That, so carry each other, restore each other, gently live by the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit, go back to the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. That word spiritual there is a cool word. Um, I don't know if I dare try to pronounce it. Uh, 
pneumaticos, something like that. But the first word in there is pneuma, and pneuma means spirit. So living by the spirit, this and spirit pneuma is breath and wind. But to have that in us, as we we practice it, can we just practice it? Y'all just practice it. Just practice it. Living with the Spirit in you. Get up in the morning. Hello, Holy Spirit. I welcome you to walk with me today. Lord, help me be open to what you're saying to me today. Y'all, it, it, it's, let them start with the small stuff of telling you when to, you know, go brush your teeth and get ready to work. You know, a little start with the little things and he will start um, also downloading the big things but it's, we just have to practice it. We start walking in it. We ask him to take my, my ideas of today and I want your ideas. What is today? What does your schedule look like today, Holy Spirit? You show me by just, by just releasing that, not your control, not your will, but his today to live in that freedom. Good morning, Kristen. Good to see you. So six one says to restore them gently. This burden is bearing sin. Verse 5 tells us, If anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. So just stay humble in it. Don't, you know, we're like, oh, look what you did. Well, just watch out if you start doing that. Don't worry. God will keep you humble, right? Then he, he can take, he says, each one should test his own actions and then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. Stop that comparing thing. Can I just say stop it? Can y'all just say that too? Stop it. Stop comparing yourself to somebody else. Um, for each one, look at verse 5. For each one to carry his own load. And so look, verse 2 says we need to bear one another's burdens. But then in verse 5 it says, For each one to carry his own load. Can I just say, do what you can, do what you can. Ask for help when you need help. Forget that pride. Tell somebody when you need help. Reach out to a sister or brother and say, I need prayer. Please pray for me. I need you to help me. I've got this sin in my life. I've got this thing going on, and I want to get rid of it. I don't want to live this way anymore. Help me, help me, help me. Help me carry this love. Sometimes we need to ask for help. Um, so beware, my friends, beware of manipulation of Scripture. Anytime you feel guilted into um, guilted into helping somebody, that's a sign for you to step back and to think about, pray about what you're doing. There's probably a boundary that's been crossed when you when you're feeling that way. I wanted I want to say too that realize that he's talking to the church here that we don't. Bury, that we don't need to carry one another's burdens alone, one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, Jesus sent the disciples out in two, two and two and two and two. So I want to encourage you, if you are the only one trying to help somebody, at least you feel like you're the only one trying to help somebody, get somebody, get a team member, get a whole bunch of team members to help you minister to that person, to help you carry their that burden don't let them put all their eggs in your basket because you will get burned out and you will not be able to restore that person by yourself we are not meant to do this alone this ministry we are the church we are the family of god we are to work together the disciples were a team Work together. Find others. Don't do it by yourself. Don't take all the responsibilities on your shoulders for somebody else. You need someone to be in there with you. Um, so don't do it by yourself. Andy, how to do that? Well, first pray. Go to church and pray about it and talk to people. And, and, and I'm not... Don't go, don't go gossiping about people. But really pray about it. Ask the Lord to bring you some people to help. Um, to help you minister to that person. Small groups are so important within the church. Have that small group um, of people 
that you can carry each other's load together, right? So realize that, that he's talking about a group of people um, that we are to minister together and listen to the Spirit. Be aware, this whole, this whole chapter, verse 5, is talking about the Spirit, being aware of the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. Um, so be aware, minister in that Spirit. Ministry, uh, boundaries in ministry, it all starts with taking inventory of our own heart. And I think that's what he's talking about in those verses I was talking, reading just now. Taking inventory of our own heart, you know, our own health, uh, where we are with God first, being aware if we're feeling resentful, if, if, if we just, we're like, we can't quit helping that person, even though we're finding the resentment there. Something's going on. There's an, there's an insecurity of our own. There's something that God is inviting us to work through also. So it's always, before we do ministry, take an inventory of our own heart and ask God to do the healing He needs to do with us so that we can minister that healing with others. Live by the Spirit and serve together, not alone, but together in love. Hey, hold my hands. I'm going to pray you up. Jesus, thank you so much for the understanding of this verse and what it means. Lord, I do pray for uh, just a, a greater awareness of your presence, of your voice, of your healing, of your restoration in our own lives, that we could share that and uh, testify minister that same to others and i do pray for partners in ministry i pray for teams in ministry that we would not go out as lone wolves trying to restore and heal everybody that you would open our eyes to those around us who we can minister together Thank you, Jesus, for this word. Thank you that your word is alive and active. It's in your name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Bill is saying, I keep Dina in prayers. We will do that. Dina is an ER nurse. Dina is often with us um, every morning. Well, when she can, when she's not working. Bill, we will be lifting her up. Definitely. I think there were some other comments some of y'all gave me. I couldn't read as I was talking. I'll go back through and read through them and respond to you. Thank you for joining me today. Tomorrow we're going to be in um, 2 Corinthians 8, 13 and 14. Go to Words by Andy Lee. Get the printable and work through these, these scriptures and the questions and prompts that I've given you. If you want to watch this again, it'll be up on YouTube. Um, and probably in about 30 minutes or so, you can watch it again. Share it with somebody. If this blessed you and, and helped you, share it with others. Thank you for joining me. Go out there and be a threat to the enemy as you, in wisdom and by the Spirit, love the people around you. And you carry their, help carry their load with others who are helping you. Many blessings. Bye.